In today's lesson, we'll be learning about greatest common factor. A greatest common factor, or GCF, can be found in one of two ways. The first way is using mental math. However, you'll need to be good at your times table. And the second way is using something called prime factorization. If you recall, a prime number is a number only divisible by one and itself, while a factor is a number that divides evenly into another number. I want to know what is the greatest common factor of 8 and 12. In other words, what is the largest number that can divide evenly into 8 and 12? Using mental math and your times table, some of you may find the GCF to be 4, since 4 is the largest number that can divide evenly into 8 and 12. However, if you're not so good at your times table, you're going to have to use prime factorization. I want you to think of two numbers that multiply to give you 8. Some of you may have came up with 2 and 4. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. We're now going to try and break up 4. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 4. I can think of 2 times 2. Again, both of these are prime numbers, so we're going to stop. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the number 12. Again, think of two numbers that multiply to give you 12. I can think of 2 times 6. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. I can break down 6. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 6. I can think of 2 times 3. Both 2 and 3 are prime numbers, therefore we're going to stop there. The prime factors of 8 are 2, 2, and 2. So I'm going to write that down right over here. 2, 2, and 2. Meanwhile, the prime factors of 12 are 2, 2, and 3. And I'm going to copy that down over here as well. 2, 2, and 3. Take a close look at the prime factors of 8. Also, take a close look at the prime factors of 12. What do they have in common? You'll notice that these are in common. They share a pair of 2's and they also share another pair of 2's. So 2 times 2 gives you 4. Therefore, the GCF of 8 and 12 is 4. I now want to know what is the GCF of 12 and 18. In other words, what is the largest number that can divide evenly into 12 and 18? Using mental math and your times table, some of you may have come up with the number 6, since it is the largest number that can divide evenly into 12 and 18. However, if you're not good with your times tables, you're going to have to use prime factorization. We're going to start by breaking up 12. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 12. I can think of the numbers 2 and 6. 2 is a prime number, therefore we're going to stop there. Next, we want to break up 6. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 6. I can think of 2 and 3. Both 2 and 3 are prime numbers, therefore we're going to stop there as well. I'm now going to break up the number 18. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 18. I can think of 2 and 9. 2 is a prime number, therefore I'm going to stop there. We're now going to try and break up the number 9. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 9. I can think of the numbers 3 times 3. 3 is a prime number, therefore we're going to stop there as well. The prime factors of 12 are 2, 2, and 3. I'm going to write that down here. 2, 2, and 3. Meanwhile, the prime factors of 18 are 2, 3, and 3. I'm going to write that down here as well. 2, 3, and 3. Take a close look at the prime factors of 12. I also want you to take a close look at the prime factors of 18. What do they have in common? You'll notice that these 2's are in common and these 3's are in common. Since they have a pair of 2's in common, and a pair of 3's, therefore 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So, the GCF of 12 and 18 is 6. 
Next, I want to know what is the GCF of 16, 32, and 80? In other words, what is the largest number that can divide evenly into 16, 32, and 80? Using mental math on your times table, some of you may have come up with the number 8, since 8 is the largest number that can divide evenly into 16, 32, and 80. However, if you're not good with your times tables, you're going to have to use prime factorization. I'm going to start by breaking down 16. Think of two numbers that multiply to 16. I can think of the numbers 2 and 8. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. I can break down 8. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 8. I can think of the numbers 2 and 4. Again, 2 would be a prime number, so we're going to stop there. 4 can be broken up further. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 4. I can think of the numbers 2 and 2, both of which are prime numbers. We're going to do the same thing with 32. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 32. I can think of 2 and 16. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. 16 can be broken down into the numbers 2 and 8. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. 8 can be broken down into the numbers 2 and 4. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. 4 can be broken down into the numbers 2 and 2, both of which are prime numbers. So we're going to stop there. I'm going to do the same thing with 80. So we're going to break down 80 into two numbers. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 80. I can think of the numbers 2 and 40. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. 40 can be broken down into 2 and 20. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. 20 can be further broken down into 2 and 10. 2 is a prime number, so we're going to stop there. 10 can be broken down into 2 and 5. Both 2 and 5 are prime numbers, so we're going to stop there as well. The prime factors of 16 were 2, 2, 2, and 2. And I'm going to rewrite them down here. 2, 2, 2, and 2. Meanwhile, the prime factors of 32 were 2, 2, 2, 2, and another 2. I'm going to copy that down over here. 2, 2, 2, 2, and another 2. Last but not least, the prime factors of 80 were 2, 2, 2, 2, and 5. And I'm going to copy that down here as well. 2, 2, 2, 2, another 2, and 5. I want you to take a close look at the prime factors of 16. I also want you to take a close look at the prime factors of 32. And take a close look at the prime factors of 80. What do they have in common? You'll see that these 2's are in common, these 2's are in common, these 2's are in common, and these 2's are in common. Since there are four sets of 2 in common, therefore we can write 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that is equal to 16. Therefore, the greatest common factor of 16, 32, and 80 is 16.